In the last screencast, we learned about saving new users to the database. And now we're going to learn how to load or select our newly inserted users from the database again and update it. Imagine you're on a website where a user can change his email address, and that's what we're going to implement. So let's dive right in and open up our database test class. Inside, I'll just duplicate our last method and rename it to something sensible like test, load, and update user. And to satisfy all Game of Thrones fans, let's set the email address to tywin at lannister.com and delete the statements at the end of the method. So just like in the last screencast, we save our user to the database and sometime later we want to retrieve Tywin again from the database and change his email address to something else. And the first step is, as always, to open up a database connection and we can just duplicate the code above for that. And then inside the transaction, there are two things we want to do. A, load the user from the database, and then B, update his email address. So let's start with loading the user from the database. And for that, we want to run a simple query in SQL speak, select from users, where email is tywinlannister.com. But we're not going to write plain SQL, because while Hibernate allows you to run plain SQL statements, it brings its own query language, and it's called HQL, the Hibernate query language. And you can read up on HQL online on the Hibernate website, but for now you can take away that it's a query language similar to SQL, but with a few object-oriented enhancements. All right, so let's remove the session save line and write user Taiwan equals session create query and now comes our hql from user where email equals colon email and note yes there is a colon before the second email to signal it's a named parameter and then we also call set parameter with the param called email and our tywin at Lannister email. And then we invoke unique result, meaning we want exactly one object back, not a list. And last but not least, we have to put a cast in. Simply hit Alt Enter. And it's a pity that Hibernate only returns us untyped objects, but that's the way it is. Also note that unique result can return null if the query doesn't return any results or if it returns more results, it would, it would throw an exception. But in this example, we know it will return just one result. So we can simply change the user's email to Tywin, let's say, paidhisdebts.com without doing null checks or something else. Interestingly enough, that will be all that's needed to do to update the email address. How can that be? Well, first, Let's run our test and see what happens. So we right click it, run it, it compiles and it runs. And when you scroll down in the log, you can see that Hibernate indeed executed an update statement and we didn't even tell it to. Now, let me tell you why I did that. It's whenever you select records from the database, Hibernate remembers these objects throughout the current session or slash database connection. And Hibernate also notices when you change these objects or some properties of these objects. And then later, once you commit that transaction, Hibernate will simply execute all these change deltas against the database. That's why we do not have to explicitly call update or save on our Tywin user. Fancy, isn't it? But to make things more explicit, let's try to call update explicitly and see if something changes. So we put in a session.update call and put in our Taiwan user as a parameter. 
and that's it. We right-click the test and run it again. And what do we see at the end of our console? Yes, the update statement got executed exactly once, not twice. And personally, I think that having an explicit update call makes things much more explicit and debuggable in the end, and our intentions much more clear, but decide for yourself. In any case, we're still missing a proper test. And let's write the test where we run two queries against the database. The first one selects our user based on his old email, and we expect our result to be null. And the second one selects our user based on his new email, and that should obviously be non-null. So let's copy and paste some code again, delete the unneeded lines, and rename the variable to old tywin. Duplicate the line and change the email parameter to the new email address. And now there's two assertions missing. So assert that old tywin is null value and assert that new tywin is not null value. All right, showtime. So let's run our test by right clicking the method and running it, and our test compiles, runs, and the test is green. Let's also look at our log, scroll down slowly, and see if our SQL statements look correct. And that is, you can see that Hibernate executed an update statement, followed by our two selects. Isn't it nice to have SQL logging enabled? So congratulations. You now know how to run simple HQL queries against a database and also save changes to the database, i.e. execute updates, and on to some more complex examples in the next screencast.